Yo, what's good? It's your boy BK, B E K A Y. Brooklyn's in the building. Hip hop is fucking alive at nodfactor.com. Get your mind right. Number one spot for hip hop, baby. He called Eric Sermon and he's down for the kid. So we took a ride to Long Island out to his crib. But for white rap cats, I wasn't alone there. I mean, I seen my man Scram Jones there. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's a joint on my album called Rap Star, and it's how to become a rap star. And it's like, yo, man, I give you five minutes of non stop rap. Of a story that I went through And it's like, now you tell me What else, what would you do? You know what I'm saying? Like I did And that's only a third of the story That's the crazy point Is that's not even close to the whole story But I did mention that And what you're referring to specifically Was me going to um, Bernard Alexander is a manager for Def Squad And for uh, a lot of artists And uh, he's a good dude Big up Bernard, you know And um I met him actually at Daddy's house, which is Puffy Studio. Um, I was invited up to Puffy Studio um, by Hall Pierre, who's the vice president of Bad Boy. And he actually kind of set me up in a position where I didn't realize what I was walking into. There was a whole industry, a room of the industry, and they were doing a beat shopping session. And so there were people like Mario Winans there, there were Bad Boy artists, Def Squad artists, um, artists off of Universal Atlantic. It was crazy, you know, I had no idea what I was walking into. And they kind of wanted to put me on the spot because I had met them before in the office. So they wanted to see if I could show and prove on the spot. And they were playing the beats that dudes were shopping to the bigger artists. And I fucking ran through them shits like the flu. You know what I'm saying? I went in a million percent. And the other A&Rs and people from different companies, not from Bad Boy in the room, were like, yo, son. You know, no disrespect to Puff and them. I know you're fucking with them, but... Yo, holla at me, giving me their numbers, giving me their info. And that was a big day that changed a lot for me. I met a lot of different people from a lot of big labels. And it also meant a lot for me because I learned about how scumbag and fucked up the industry was. Because everyone told me, don't say nothing to Puff, don't say nothing to this one. But they were all willing to backstab each other in order to get me to their office. You know, when they had already known that I was dealing with them. So that already put me in a mind state of what the fuck, you know. But no disrespect to Bernard, that's one of the ways I met Bernard. You know what I'm saying? And I went out to Eric Sermon's crib in Long Island. And um, they wanted to sign me. He said they already had papers ready. You know, we went there. We chilled. We played pool. We ate chicken. We had a good time. We drank beers. But, you know, Scram Jones was there, too. And that's who we mentioned. And Scram Jones is known as a producer now. But he was always an MC beforehand. And I think he took the production route because he realized how hard it is to break into the game as any artist. Let alone a white rapper trying to do their thing. You know what I'm saying? The odds ain't on your team. And uh, that's, that's what I'm talking about in that particular instance. Me and Scram were there. We were pinned against each other. We were put in an awkward position, even though we were cool on a friendship level. And um, neither one of us ended up really signing with any of those companies at the end of the day. And that's why that's why I said that on that track. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the truth. Because that's my life. And that's what I talk about on music. As opposed to some other people like to tell stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting hot. Getting hot, yo. Getting hot.